and welcome to Tips and Tales, a program about the adoption, care, and treatment of animals. Adopting the right pet for your family and lifestyle is important because a forever home is the ultimate goal. On this edition, see how dogs rescued from a meat farm in South Korea were given a new leash on life. Don't go away. We'll be right back with Tips and Tales from the Fairfax County Animal Shelter. Welcome to Tips and Tales. My name is Brian Ashby. Volunteers use their talents in many ways to help animals at the Fairfax County Animal Shelter. For instance, professional photographers train all skill levels how to showcase every pet's best side to potential adopters. Several weeks after their arrival from South Korea, a photo shoot for Snowball and Luna looked more like a reunion of good friends. They were two of 23 dogs rescued by Humane Society International from a meat farm in Seoul, South Korea. It had been a long journey for Snowball, Luna, and 21 other dogs. After a quarantine process, they arrived at the Animal Welfare League of Alexandria for an initial holding period. Then they transferred to different shelter and rescue league partners in the Washington metropolitan area. South Korea is the only known Asian country that solely raises dogs on farms for food. Living in small, crowded cages, many suffer from disease and malnutrition, and most are subject to daily cruelty. The dog meat practice itself has been dwindling. The younger generation is not as uh, involved in the actual practice of eating dog. They do believe in the rights to eat dog, but as they're learning more about the cruelty behind the trade, they are less and less behind and supportive of the trade. Um, markets getting the pressure to close down, uh, especially with the upcoming Olympics, which is will be, the Winter Olympics will be held in Seoul in 2018. And that is really sort of our end game result. Um, there's three years between now and then. We want to try and meet with as many farmers as we can, meet with as many markets as we can, meet with the Dog Farmer Association, as well as meet with the government and try to see if there's a way that we could uh, expedite the momentum that's already in place in Korea to shut down the industry for good. Partnering with other concerned groups, HSI is committed to improving the welfare of dogs in the region by ending the illegal trade in dogs for human consumption a trade which represents both a severe and prevalent animal welfare concern and a risk to human health because it facilitates the transmission of diseases. What this rescue operation really drove home for the shelter directors as a region is how important and powerful collaborative efforts are. Working together as a region, as a state, and even nationally with HSUS and HSI internationally is very powerful because you're connecting resources, you're connecting social media, you're connecting animals that are looking for homes. What Fairfax County may not have, Arlington or Alexandria or Loudoun or other jurisdictions may have. So it really uh, drove home the point of connecting the dots and the resources. Of course, when we interact with these dogs over in Korea, it's, it, there isn't any one favorite amongst them. It's just, uh, it's remarkable that a dog like a snowball can be taken from that terrible environment, that cruel environment, and be brought here. And it's, it is, is, in our opinion, exactly what we wanted people to see, is you have a dog who's being raised as a dog meat dog, and yet look at the personality and look at the, look at the social, social ability of this dog. Being an emergency placement partner with Humane Society International is very important to us because we believe you know, animal abuse and animal welfare issues exist everywhere. And the Washington area is a very, very diverse uh, community population. People from all around the world live here. And so I think shining a light on global issues, ways we can make a difference, uh, transfers so nicely to state issues and regional issues. Um, the, that saying it's a small world, 
is absolutely true when it comes to animals. Uh, we have found through the, the various rescues we've been a part of, whether it be domestic rescue or it be international rescue, that the actual uh, taking in of these dogs and the compelling stories behind them has led to a spike in local adoption of all the animals that are in the shelter. Um, people may come through with expectations of adopting that one dog with that compelling story, but they find that they fall in love with another dog that's in another cage having nothing to do with the story. And that happens often, and we have found that um, most local shelters are very willing to be engaged in these rescues because the compelling story brings people, brings traffic to the shelter, but they walk away adopting other animals that are in the shelter. Don't go away. We'll be right back with tips and tales from the Fairfax County Animal Shelter. There's a shelter pet who wants to meet you. Meet one today. Visit the shelter pet project. Luna. Adopt. Luna. Snowball and Luna were two of three dogs to arrive at the Fairfax County Animal Shelter. During their lifetime, they were never socialized, never given vet care, piece of food, or shown an ounce of kindness or compassion. These disadvantages, they grew to become loving companion animals. When I was growing up, I was a military brat, so I've kind of been traveling around the world a little bit, being dragged along with my family. And one of the places I visited when I was younger was Korea, uh, South Korea. And I remember my sister and I were actually on the streets in Korea, and we saw a bunch of the meat farm dogs um, bundled up in little cages in the market being sold as meat. Um, back then, I didn't know that that's what they were there for. And so my sister and I thought it was like a strange pet shop. And so we're petting the dogs and letting them lick our fingers through the cages. And we didn't know what was going on until afterwards. So I guess I kind of had that personal connection. So when I saw that these meat farm dogs were being brought to America, um, it really sparked my interest in seeing if I could help one of them out. One of the things about Luna that actually drew me to her was um, while she was fearful and wary, I could tell that she didn't want to be fearful. She wanted to work her way through that. And so um, when I brought her here, she was afraid of myself as well. Um, she actually took to my dog, Sirius, a lot faster. I think she just trusts dogs more than humans. Um, and so she would keep her distance from me. She would kind of skitter away. It was hard for me to even get to her to, to touch her and pet her and caress her. Um, as you can see right now, she's a lot better because of the, the work I've been trying to do with her. But um, uh, I guess one of the things that really showed her change of behavior was um, when she started to accept me. And probably about two and a half or three weeks into my having her, um, it was the first time she licked my hand. Um, she had never done that with me, and then when she did that, it was just like her just saying that she accepted me for once. And now she doesn't scamper away. She takes comfort, you know, with my hands touching her. She didn't really know how to be a dog, I think. She didn't know how to do things like beg for food or, or eat snacks, things that weren't good for her, like french fries. She didn't know what a french fry was for the first time. Um, another thing is she learned about toys, I guess, from her fabulous first foster. Um, she got um, to experience little fluffy toys, and, and she grew to love those. And so when I would get her here, um, I guess you could call her a miniature doggy toy hoarder because she would take the toys off the shelf right here and go put them in little piles elsewhere in the house or even take them out through the dog door and go outside. Um, when she brought one out to her pile, she would come back in grab another one and not even really play with it but just take it away with her and, and go put it with the others. The dogs that I've had before, um, the current one and then the one prior to him, um, I did work with um, search and rescue work and um, when my current dog uh, wasn't able to continue on with the search and rescue work I turned him into a therapy dog and we go to libraries where children will read to him and it's part of a read to the dog program that's really really rewarding um, and it keeps him uh, able to be socialized with a lot of different people. I can picture Luna doing the same thing because once she's kind of in your lap, um, she's very peaceful and calm and you can just pet her and you know that effect as it's well known is very great for, for people. And if she became a therapy dog, I just thought that would be kind of cool to have her go from you know being at a meat farm, being brought to America, turning into a therapy dog where she can actually help out other human beings. But I know that's a lot to ask uh, of her right now without a lot more training and getting her socialized. If I can, um, that's what I'll do, but if I'm unable to do that, if she just has a happy, long, healthy life, then to me that's a, a goal that I, I really want for her. If 
few months ago, I started following the Fairfax County Animal Shelter uh, Facebook page. And I saw that uh, the International Humane Society had rescued 23 dogs from a South Korean meat farm. And it really touched my heart. <laughs> and um, I started praying for these dogs to find really good homes. A family had adopted Snowball, and I knew the family, wonderful family. They attend one of the schools where I'm, I cross the students. I'm a crossing guard for the police department. So the mom brought uh, Snowball over to the corner, and she was in tears. Her daughter had developed severe allergies to the dog, and they were not going to be able to keep him. And she asked if I were, would be interested. Well, we have a dog. Um, we have a six-year-old golden retriever, Bonnie and we had no intentions of adopting another dog at this time. I think I fell in love with Snowball uh, right away. He was so cute. He was fuzzy. He came over and sat at the corner and looked up at me for a treat, and he just, I just fell in love with him. So I t talked to the shelter. We took Bonnie out to the shelter, and I ended up taking Snowball home with me that day. We changed Snowball's name. Um, we found out he was going to probably be 40 to 50 pounds. He's a male dog, so calling him Snowball, we just thought was a little wimpy. So we changed his name to Boomer. So he is now Boomer. And when you meet him, you will realize why his name is Boomer. He has quite the personality. I was not too crazy about getting another dog. Uh, because I figure I'm the one that's going to have to walk him along with the dog we already have. So it's just a lot of extra time. And uh, But then we got Boomer, and I got to admit, uh, he's kind of a sweet dog, and I fell in love with him as much as my wife did. Did my wife mention he likes to eat? Did my wife mention he likes to eat? Did my wife mention that he really likes to eat? Boomer is a puppy, so he has some puppy behavior that we're trying to correct. We're working with Randy at Balanced Dog Training, and Boomer is in class, uh, and also we're doing some private lessons, just trying to teach him how to become a, a better dog. Boomer has lots of energy, and I would say a couple of his favorite things. Number one is eating. And he also loves to go to Old Town Pet Resort and play in their day camp. So I take him there a couple times a week to wear off some of that energy. Oh, and did I mention he likes to eat? Oh, and did I mention he likes to eat? Since our daughter recently graduated from James Madison University and is now living in Harrisonburg, Virginia, it's just my husband and I that uh, are here and taking care of the dogs, although my daughter loves to get a dog fix and come home as, as often as she can. I told you he likes to eat. All the dogs that we've had have found us one way or another. And here's Boomer, who has come halfway around the world, and he ends up in our house. Pet overpopulation is a widespread problem. So if you're considering a new pet, come by the animal shelter and visit some of the many animals available for adoption. The Fairfax County Animal Shelter is a municipal that works with more than 77 rescue groups in addressing the needs of a county with almost 1.3 million residents. We rely on volunteers, rescue groups, and residents to make sure the animals at the shelter find forever homes. Come in today and possibly meet a new family member. My name is Brian Ashby, and thanks for watching Tips and Tales.